Let's get some insights to the news shaping the markets. For that, we welcome in Rebecca Walzer is here, President of Walzer Wealth Management. So glad you're here in person. Yes, thank you thank so you much. Um, I know the last couple of times you've been on, you've been sort of giving this word of caution to the tune of a big percentage pullback. Are you still on that uh, feeling at this moment? Yeah, and it's really hard to be on that side, right, Nicole? Because with the Trump bump, with the expectation, with foreign leaders flying from Canada to meet with him in Mar-a-Lago, from the Eurozone saying, hey, we're going to buy gas from the United States instead of Russia, all of these things coming together really makes this market really optimistic. And right. I am optimistic as well, Nicole, but the truth is we do have massive problems in Asia, specifically China and Japan, with the yen and the care trade situation so that is still a weakness and then you look at the eurozone and they're projecting only maybe two percent growth and specifically yeah. germany in a manufacturing crisis with no affordable energy with everything that happened with the Nord Stream pipeline and all of those things so when you look at all of these things together nicole you see that global demand will pull back and as that happens and even if trump does actually leverage right. the tariffs that's going to make the rest of the world again more difficult for the united states and so we are going to be the reciprocant of a, a global slowdown and so yes we still are very cautious Right. optimistic and energy demand coming down to yes. your point in your opinion and an OPEC actually delaying um you know, again, delaying the phase out of the production cuts. So yes. that's interesting. Too. Yes. Um, right now we're seeing oil today below $70 a barrel. So what kind of pullback and volatility? I mean, you were saying 30%. Are you still on the 30%? Right now we're seeing uh, 6078 on the S&P. Tell me what kind of percentages or when would you step in and buy or what kind of volatility are you really expecting? Because if you say that, that's a big number. It's a huge number, Nicole. And I, I don't want to scare people, but I, I, I just have to fight back against all this, I would say, irrational exuberance. I would say we're going back to a dot-com exuberance of before the monetization and e-commerce actually existed. Right. We had the internet. We had Pets.com worth a billion dollars before they had Remember. sold their first bag of dog food. This is the same as the AI that we're seeing now. Now, AI, just like the internet came to fruition and e-commerce became a main thing and changed everything about everything, that is the same as AI. But it's not yet monetizable. It's not yet implementable. I mean, besides chat GPT and helping you write some emails and text messages, how is the average person using AI? Does that mean it's not coming? No, no, no. It is coming, but it is not yet monetized. It's not usable. If right. you ask corporations why they're investing so much R&D in AI, it's because our competitors are doing it. They're starting to see uh, price improvements. They're starting to see staff reductions, but then job cuts will come with that. So there's a lot of right. stuff that's going to be worked out through AI. And we'll and get a job support, this is Friday. the irrational exuberance, Nicole. Right. And if you see, look, look at the jobs claims, 224. We weren't expecting it. Look at the ADP yesterday, 148. It was a little bit of a miss. So you're starting to see a little bit of labor softening and that makes Powell more concerned. Yeah, and that's one of his mandates, right? And that was something he was concerned about on, on over the last few months at first, and then it went away, yep. and then it sort of reappeared. Yep. And we'll get the non-farm payrolls on Friday. Yep. Um, so the pullback, and I want to get to commodities, because that's an area that you think might be a good play. Um, for the pullback, 10%, 20%, 30%, what would you say? So I don't think this is a normal pullback. This isn't just a correction. This is absolutely a, a realization that the world is slow down and that Trump isn't going to fix all of that just by getting reelected. And then you're going to see that, OK, we have overestimated the the monetization of AI. Right. So we are going to see. Okay. I mean, I think we're still going to be in that 30 percent range or higher. And that's right. why we're still cautioning investors. This is a top, top, top. We just had another 50, yeah. the 56 highest yesterday on the S&P, you know, the 56. <laughs> you know what year. I'm saying, of, of the, the year, of 56 the year. high no, of the I year. What That's saying. crazy, Nicole. Yeah. 56 high of the year, 2024. It's, it's based been on what? Just based on AI. And AI is real, but it is not yet monetized. Let's talk about what you think could work. Um, you think commodities might be a play, right? Is that for 2025? Is that dollar cost averaging? Get in now. What are you thinking here? The what kind of commodities? play, specifically gold, silver, and things like that. Real, true, hard asset right. money. Right, valuable Nicole. metals. When you see okay. Trump tweeting out that the BRICS nations must immediately stop any move towards an alternative currency. When you see Xi Jinping of China yeah. retaliating and saying, no, uh, we, this is going to backfire on you and starting to say now we're going to ban uh, imports to the United States that they need for military defense weapons. When you see those kinds of things, Nicole, you realize, yes, Trump is going to have some success, but he's also going to have some pushback, especially from China. Right. They control our pharmaceutical industry with the ingredients. They control a lot of military defense spending. So Trump has got to realize that there's going to 
to be offsets to what he does. And BRICS is moving towards a new uh, currency situation, a new way right. to transact between amongst their members without and outside of the U.S. dollar. So when you realize we've gone from unipolarity to multipolarity, that's when you see these kinds of big currency changes happening. I do wonder how long that would take to actually formulate and put together. Well, because um, some of the experts, because some of the experts I've spoken with don't feel like it's it's actually feasible right now. Well, they don't know how the Embridge is operating. They don't know the functionality that the Embridge already has. There's a reason that Russia, when they mentioned the Embridge, when they had their symposium for BRICS in October in Russia, yeah. uh, Russia, Putin basically said about the Embridge, and all of a sudden the Bank of International Settlements came out and said, we're going to transfer the Embridge project to China. We do not want to be involved anymore because the functionality of them to cross, transact, uh, and transactions is there, Nicole. Okay. Um, what about other things? I mean, what about the vibe of like IPOs, M&A activity? I think um, you're seeing it all pick up. Technology. All of it is all positive because this Trump effect really does give CEOs uh, a reason to hope that we're not going to have unrealized capital gains tax like we would have had if the other uh, regime had one. Right. We're not. So a lot of CEOs have a lot of reasons to be positive, but still we're going to face that global headwind. How about this? How about, so if you're expecting a pull back, let's say 30%, you said it could be more, it could be, you know, Absolutely. volatility. Um, what if you just ride it out? What if you don't do anything? You don't sell at the lows, then you really lost money. Um, I don't know if you say to buy. I mean, you, you talked about metals being a good place to yes, go. Yes, absolutely. Um, but what if you just ride it out for a year or two and do nothing with the portfolio and leave it the way it is? Is that the advice? So the advice to hold and go long like that would be if you have a long window and you don't need this to be realizable in the next 60 months, then yeah, I think you yeah. can go really long and I think okay. AI in the long run will months. come back. But okay. when if we have the kind of uh, global macroeconomic change that I'm expecting, yeah. Nicole, yeah. then no, this is not going to be a short-term thing, and if you need those funds within 60 months, you, you don't want to maybe take that risk. You I might be take profits, be on the sidelines, or be in some commodities. And there are people who are nervous. Uh, they uh, they for, are nervous for, because really some older folks that I speak to, I mean, they're worried. We're, we have the top of the top of the top, and yet we have global slowdown, and we have energy crisis, and we have new currencies coming, and we have new ways of transacting business. So all of these unknowns, and yet we're at the top of the top of the top, and people are still right. saying buy in. So I say right. dry powder, take some profits, and I right. think you're going to have more. We're going to absolutely have more clarity, Nicole, between now and January 20. A lot of things right. are going to happen between now and January 20. Okay, a lot to watch. <laughs> Rebecca Walzer, always great to have Rebecca on. Rebecca Walzer of Walzer Wealth Management. Thank, Thank you.